All right, so imagine we have a force here pushing up on this beam that's supported uh, into this wall. Uh, let's say that this force is equal to 10 newtons. And let's say this distance, this perpendicular distance to the line of action of the force is 3 meters. And then I guess we'll have to define this point over here of interest as point A. So let's draw on this line of action just for our reference. It's going to go like that. The line of action is just the line that the force points in. So we already know how to calculate the moment that this is going to cause about point A. We, uh, we said that this will be the moment about A with counterclockwise being the positive direction is equal to the distance that's perpendicular to the line of action of the force times the magnitude of the force. So we would have this is 3 meters times 10 newtons. So the moment that this force is going to cause is going to be 30 newton meters in the counterclockwise direction or the positive direction. All right. Now, there is another way to do this. It is using cross products. So I'll write it up in here in red. Uh, the way that we can do this is the moment about A, again, we'll use the same sign convention. Uh, we're going to say that this is equal to R cross F, where R is a vector and F is a vector. So what R is, R is just the, vec the position vector from point A to anywhere on the line of action. It can be here or it can be down here. It can be up here anywhere on the line of action. Uh, the units are given in meters. And for the force vector, same thing, just the, the components of the force vector given in newtons. So if we go ahead and do this, we will have our cross product will be 3, 0, 0. This is our position vector that we're considering here. We'll just use, the first of all, this horizontal distance, the perpendicular distance, and then after we'll do another example. And then here, our force is going to be 0, 10, 0, because it only has a component in the I direction. I'm oh, sorry, the K, the I, J, J, can't talk, J direction. Uh, anyways, so we'll move on. Uh, so when we cross these, the top one, we will have 0 times 0 minus 10 times 0. The bottom element will have 3 times 10 minus 0 times 0. And the middle element will have 0 times 0 minus 3 times 0. Okay, so this will give us a vector that is 0, 0, 30. All right, and so this will also mean that we will have our moment will be 30k, and this is also in Newton meters. So now we're looking at this, we have 30k hat Newton meters, but here we had 30 Newton meters counterclockwise. So if you remember our right hand rule for vector cross product, if you have uh, if you have two vectors in a plane and you want to you want to cross them, um, what we have to do is you sweep from the first one to the next one. Uh, if you line up their tails at the same place, and then your thumb, we sweep their pointer fingers, and then your thumb points in the direction of the new vector. For example. In this case, we would have our position vector green going this way. We would have our blue one going this way. And when you sweep like this with your four fingers, kind of karate chopping the page with your thumb up, uh, your thumb's going to be pointing out of the page, which would be in the positive K direction. Okay, so that makes sense. Uh, now what we can do is I'm going to do this one more time. Um, that doesn't explain actually why this is counterclockwise and this is K, though. Uh, something that we do, I guess I'll say now, uh, is the... The right hand rule we sort of modify for the cross product. So imagine your hand looks something like this. I'll just try and draw a hand here. Okay, so we have the four, four fingers, and then your thumb is going to be kind of pointing out like this. Like that, and something like that. Okay, so you'd have a nail here, and you would have these nails. I hope that makes sense. You kind of curl your fingers over. 
So what we do is you curl your fingers in the way that this arrow is going. So in this way, in this sense, you'd have to put your, you'd kind of have to, again, karate chop the page that we're writing on and curl your fingers. And then what you're going to do is you're going to see that your thumb is going to be sticking straight out of the page. And that is the direction that the K is pointing in. So if you're ever given an, if you're ever given a moment that's given in the IJRK direction, then you can hold your hand like this and you'll be able to see by the way that your fingers curl is the way that that moment will be going in that plane. I hope that makes sense. So here, put your uh, kind of karate chop the page and then curl your fingers this way and your thumb will be pointing straight out of the page in that K direction. So that's just another way. Sometimes you'll see moments as referred to in this, this type of notation it means the same as this. All right, I hope I didn't lose anyone there. Uh, I also mentioned that we can do this uh, this line of act or this position vector from the point to the line of action of the vector can be any position vector. So why don't we go and draw this one? Actually, you know what? We'll use a different color. So what if we use this as our position vector and say that this is four? So this would be five, three, four, five. Okay. Well, let's go and do that. So we have moment about a. Going this way is equal to r cross f is equal to. So now we're going to use a different, uh, different position vector. We're going to have three negative four zero cross zero ten zero. And you're looking at this, and this looks different. We'll probably get a different answer, but let's see what happens. So first element negative four times zero minus 10 times 0. Last element is 3 times 10 minus 0 times negative 4. And the middle element is 0 times 0 minus 0 times 0 minus 3 times 0. And so we will get 0, 0, 30. So hey, look at that. That's equal to 30 k newton meters. And I guarantee you this works for any position vector that's going from this point to any point along this point of action. If you don't believe me, you can try some others. All right, so now the other way that we can do this, um, these are two great ways to do it, but just another way that we can write R cross F, which is really handy and uh, we should be, you know, we should be able to do, is we can say this. We can say that R cross F, instead of doing it this way, sometimes I don't like doing it this way, I prefer to write it as we can write it as the determinant, so you do uh, just a straight line uh, of this. We have i, j, k, and then we would have rx, ry, rz, and then here we have the components fx, fz, f, oh, sorry, fy, fz. Got ahead of myself there. All right, so we can go ahead and solve this, and we're going to see if we get the same answer. So let's plug in all our values. We will have i, j, k, r, x, r, y, r, z. So r, x is 3, negative 4, 0, and then 0, 10, 0. And then the way that I like to solve determinants is you just uh, you put this here, then the first two columns, i, J, and this is just coming back to linear algebra, which I think most of you probably know by now, solving determinants and all that. So we want to go through and you make the three diagonals like this, like that, and that, and we're going to add those, multiply everything in these and add them together. So we will get R cross F is equal to I times negative 4 times 0 plus j times 0 times 0 plus k times 3 times 10 minus, and then you come back and go the other way, do these three diagonals. All right, so we have minus j times 3 times 0 minus i times 0 times 10, it's kind of hard to see what I'm writing here, minus k times minus 4 times 0. So you're going to see that all of these are going to go to 0 except for one of the terms, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 
so that we're going to have r cross f is equal to 30 k hat. And these units would be Newton meters. So this is how you solve for moments about a point using the cross product. As you see, this would definitely work in three dimensions as well. Uh, so far, we've only been doing two dimension moments, but you can easily just fill in these, uh, these components for the k components of the r vector and also of the force vector. And uh, we can use this definitely to solve in three dimensions. And you can choose to do it this way in red or this way in blue, obviously, or just by inspection using the perpendicular distance in the force. So there we go, that's a couple ways that we can solve for moments. Uh, and in the next video, we'll do another example. Uh, we'll have a force on an angle and we'll solve it with all three of these different methods. All right, I will see you guys there.